I think I have confirmation now. Uh, again, I've pulled up sore in the adductors and glutes after leg press. Uh, it's just an observation. I don't really mind. It's not going to change anything I do. I'm just going to continue as I am for the next couple of weeks, smashing leg press. So that's not going to change. Uh, I want to push. I want to be better at pressing. So I'm going to press. Uh, you know, I've kind of long gone past the idea of, no, no, I need this muscle to do the pushing, that muscle to do the pushing. The quads are quads, I understand. Um, that's kind of what I'm trying to attack. And uh, I thought leg press was going to be a great idea for it, but apparently it's not. Uh, still, my adductors and glutes are overpowering everything and, and, and causing me doms, even in an exercise that should be the one that uh, should be hitting the quads. And yesterday I tried putting my feet lower, using all these shoes, getting really low, sinking it in. Uh, but the more I did that, the more hip flexion I had. Uh, and basically, the more doms I have in the adductors and the glutes. So, uh, you know, in the same token, sure, go deeper, go deeper with the range of motion. But still, <laughs> going deeper not only takes the knee flexion further, but it also takes the hip flexion further. And so... You know, uh, which which flexes and extensors are going to work more? Well, in my case, it's always the damn hips. And um, it is what it is. I'll just continue on how I am um, and uh, just keep on keeping on. Uh, this morning, though, I've woken up and I'm like, okay, I'm sore through there, but like my hips feel wonky. You know, this is the thing that I guess uh, when you're, you know, playing around with machines, uh, yeah, okay, you overload certain aspects, but there's a lot of, parts of the body which are taking a holiday when you're doing the leg press and I think uh, because there is no stabilization requirement because you can just keep on pushing until the cows come home there are certain muscles that are not really all that involved and I think the the side glute stuff TFL and all that stuff that you otherwise would use uh, when it comes to leg press well, when it comes to squats you don't use in the leg press and so today I thought I'll warm up with this today's kind of like the day off I've had work in the morning, cut the commitments after work and whatnot, uh, racing around. So this is kind of the last, you know, part of my day. So I thought I'd have an easier day today, but I, I, I basically supersetted my, what I called stand abductions, uh, with my squats. So I worked up to 180, uh, and just did abductions. To this day, I, I still feel like there's something there. Uh, every time I do abductors, so A, B, B for Brad or B for Bob, whatever you want to call it, no adduction, so no adduction, abduction. Um, when I, every, every time I do that, I feel great in my hips. So I feel like that's a one-to-one -one ratio for me. Uh, if I do horse stands, I feel magnificent. If I do abductions, I feel magnificent. Any which way, banded, not banded, seated, not seated, laying down, not laying down. Like every time I hit the side glute stuff, I feel lighter on my feet. I I just feel lighter on my feet. But when I do you know, my normal squats, when I do leg press, sure, the muscles are getting smashed, the big guys. But I don't walk away feeling light on my feet. I feel kind of like tight and cramped up and, and, and just not the greatest feeling. But when I do horse stands, amazing. And so yesterday, I finished off the entire leg session, which was a lot of leg pressing. I finished it off with horse stands. Walked out like a ballerina. Even though I'm exhausted, something about wide stands, something about... Turning on those abductors, those glutes, that wide stance just does some magical stuff to my hips. I think it's simply because I spend so much time in narrow, when I turn on these other muscles which are involved in the wide, there's, there's like a degree of balance, there's a degree of, I don't know, it's almost like this tension that leaves my body. It's incredible. And I, I would similarly say that that type of feeling I get also with bench press, man, I still can't get over it, dude. There's something amazing when I'm benching wide. After all these years going narrow, I go wide, my shoulders feel great, my elbows feel great, I'm getting pumped in all the right areas, nothing hurts. And this is something that I just keep on raving on about. Man, when you're doing exercise and that exercise beats you up and you're like, all right, I have to now run around it, do a method, do periodization, do this, do that to get the inflammation down. That's kind of part of the parcel, right? Like you just expect that. But then occasionally you do exercises which literally, if I had 25 freaking hours in a day and all I freaking did was bench wide, I still think 
I would still feel great. I'll probably die by the end of it from rhabdomyolysis, but I would feel great in my muscles. Like, but where, where, like if I went narrow, my usual grip, the, the grip that I used to hit 150, 200 on the bench, man, like there's a certain amount of volume that I can take. After that, I am booking in one-to-one -one ratio, booking in feeling like shit tomorrow. And so the way I combat, combated that, you know, the way I kind of worked all that out was like, cool. All right. If I'm going to have a crazy bench day, I need to grab a hold of that belt and that kettlebell. And I need to do arm wrestling exercises, pronation, supination, rising. Okay. You want to do 20 sets of bench? Cool. I need to do two hours worth of arm wrestling training. And it's like, I mean, that's doable. You can still do that, but I'll do wide. Oh, it's all inclusive, man. It is all inclusive. All my efforts that I put into it, fine. And you sit back and you're like, well, this is what my body wants, man. It is obvious. It is obvious. Not only am I getting stronger, improving session by damn session. And I am a 35-year-old dude, 10 years in, 11 years into training properly, hard, you know, really focusing on getting stronger. And I'm improving session by session on something like this. That's unheard of, man. So everything is pointing towards me doing more of this stuff. More, more, more. <laughs> It's unreal, man. It's unreal. So like, you know, I'll just keep on keeping on. I don't know. Um, I've spent such a long time kind of like forcing these uh, certain ideas onto my body. You're going to do this, you're going to do that, but... I don't know. Uh, I'm just now sitting here in the back of my mind as I'm talking, thinking to myself, so why don't I try again wide squats? What is your excuse? Not box squats, the shit that hurt me in the past. Just wide. Wide. Kind of like the stands that I'm using with my overhead squats. Do that with the bar on your back. Sure. If the following day you end up Waking up with like tight hips, sore hips, shitty hips, everything crap. Okay, cool. No worries. Don't do it. But what if you wake up and you feel mint? Kind of like you feel with bench press. What are we talking about here, dude? Literally. Like what, what is the conversation going to be? What, what are we going to say? I'm sitting here. I'm like, I don't have an answer why I haven't tried that yet. On days like this, especially when it's easy. Come in. Whatever, man. Two plates on the bar. Like, treat it like the bench press. When I first started bench pressing wide, I was terrible. 60 kilos, I think I started off. 60, 80 kilos, something like that. Terrible. Well, that's cool. No worries. I spent a couple of weeks at that. Go up. 100 kilos, go up. 110 kilos, go up. 120 kilos, go up. 130 kilos. Why can't I have the same patience with squats? I'm going to do it. I have no other excuse. Appreciate you guys. Catch you in the next one. Peace out.